Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I am Miguel Iglesias, a concept artist and illustrator with more than 20 years of professional experience in the entertainment industry and I am here to share with you the insights of my creative process. For today's video I will show you the process of creating this tech priest from the Warhammer 40,000 universe and talk about a fundamental key to work and create like a professional artist. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video to help me grow the channel so I can spend more time delivering more quality content and tutorials for you. Also, don't forget that I stream here on YouTube every Saturday at 9 p.m. Central European time. During the stream, we talk about illustration, concept art, design, tips about the profession, etc. etc. And you can ask me any questions or doubts you may have about the industry or technical skills. So join the stream and my Discord to make part of a great, fun, supportive and growing community. And also, just so you know, I actually spent some time painting this same character during my stream. So you can make suggestions and give your feedback or input throughout the process. Alright, let's start with the process of this character and introduce this key fundamental you must use if you want to start painting and creating as a true professional or, at the very least, as a pro. Many people think that to be a pro, uh, to reach a level to become a professional artist, the most important thing is to be technically great. But this notion is not accurate and leads to a misconception. Technical mastery is definitely a very important aspect of being a professional, of course. It is a must. But what really pulls a pro artist apart from amateurs is something more subtle but extremely important. This key is focusing your creative energy and the use of your technical skills with a specific direction or creative goal in mind. Doing things blindly and just for the sake of doing something so-called cool or good-looking is for the most part a sign of creative immaturity and amateurism. If you want to start creating as a professional artist, you must create with a purpose, focus and direction. It could be from a narrative point of view, for example, what we could call the subject matter. What is it that you want to say with your piece? Or from a more purely designed point of view where you need to focus on solving some specific problem with your design work instead. But bear in mind that these two, the subject matter and the design work, do not exclude each other and you can combine both in your focus for your piece depending on what is it that you are creating. Another important thing to be aware of is that the subject matter or the design goal you may have for your piece don't necessarily need to be very complicated or pretentious in order to become great. Sometimes the more simple they are, the better. But the key is that they need to be clearly defined from the start so you can focus your creative energy toward those goals. Now, since there is no better way to explain things than with a good example, I will use the process of creating this character to illustrate these ideas. Okay, while I'm filling the background for my piece, let's go through the narrative and design goals for this character illustration that will help me and funnel my focus throughout the whole creative process. So. I will create a tech priest of the cult Mechanicus from the Warhammer 40k universe. So I will put here a little bit of context and background on the lore. The religion of the cult Mechanicus values knowledge and the technology it creates above all else and views the final embrace of technology in the form of a purely mechanical existence as the ultimate destiny for mankind's evolution. My motivation to create this character was how interesting I find the idea behind this faction regarding their obsession with cybernetics enhancements and how it creates many unsettling questions regarding what is the limit of these enhancements until you cannot call them human any longer. 
to the point where they start looking like very creepy cybernetic monsters. We can say that this is going to be my main focus for this piece. The key element we have been talking about is going to be to represent in some form the uneasy feeling created as a result of heavy cybernetic enhancements and leaving an open question about how far you can go until you can no longer consider the individual a human. Not sure how literal or subtle I will go with the key idea for the piece, but at least this will be the initial foundation from which I will be constructing this piece. Now, let's look at other relevant ideas that will help me explore and expand this concept and give the character more context and make it more believable. Since this character is supposed to be a priest of this religion, I must ensure to portrait some of its defining traits in its visual design and elements. The most important of these is the replacement of body parts by a myriad of biomechanical and cybernetic enhancements and prosthetics. I also must ensure he looks like a priest, right? When I started, I also decided that I wanted him to be some sort of herald or messenger, but of not a very high status. That will help me to decide what degree of cybernetic augmentations he will have since the lower you go in the Mechanicus cult ranks, the more human you look. But the higher you go, the replacements of body part is more and more exacerbated to the point of barely resembling a human at all. So my tech priest should all over have an obvious cybernetic implant, etc. but still retain a human look for the most part. The position as a herald or messenger would also help me to establish certain elements in his design that would help to establish a certain level of context and purpose on his look. With all these ideas in mind, I can start the process with the focus on this general direction, knowing that it is clear enough to guide my creative process but still open enough so I can explore and choose many different approaches. So. As you may know, if you have been following me for some time now, every time I start a character, if I can, I will start with the head and face. It really helps me to get into the mindset of the character itself, like some kind of communion that will help me to understand the character better, to empathize with his or her motivations, history, life, experiences, etc., etc. So I am thinking of the phase of a mature man getting into the late 50s. At this point, I just want to construct the head merely as a foundation. It will be the human foundation upon which I will start to modify and add cybernetics. It will also help me to establish the lighting for the whole piece. At this stage, I don't need to go into details and leaving the head quite rough is more than enough. Now that the whole face is done, since I have no clear idea of how I want to represent the cybernetics, I can start exploring several alternatives. One thing I know is that I want to give him a very shocking look by playing around with the anatomy, to remove some of the key human features, but still retaining a minimum level of his humanity. For that, I tried to replace the lower jaws with some exposed bones, but I thought it was not enough. On the other hand, I liked how it exposed uh, the inside of the throat and mouth. And on that note, I always thought that as soon as you remove the lower jaw to any face, it gives a very creepy look since it takes away the key part of what defines and constitutes the anatomy of the human face. So I decided to remove altogether the lower jaw, exposing even the spine, giving him, in my opinion, a very shocking look. And I was very pleased with it. So I went forward with it, trying to see how I could expand this idea. Are there cables hanging from underneath the upper jaw? How would he speak or breathe? Or would he use a speaker attached, replacing the lower jaw, for example? 
I tried several ideas but none convinced me 100%, so I decided to leave it for now, since I was happy with the result so far, and I moved to construct the rest of the figure and his pose. Since he is a priest, I must give his attitude and costume an air that communicates that to the audience. The priests of the cult Mechanicus wear long robes that they commonly use to hide highly modified tabernetics enhancements underneath. So he should definitely wear one. And on that note, the priests of this cult also wear a very iconic big hood over the heads. But since in my case I want to give the head some protagonism by showcasing his creepy augmentations, I decided he will not be wearing one. And this is a good example of how having some clear initial directions of what is your main focus for your piece helps making certain creative decisions that otherwise you would not even consider making in the first place. Another consideration I make at this point is that since he is not only a priest, but a herald or messenger, I should pose him with certain level of solemn attitude or maybe as he would be addressing a crowd or announcing the arrival of somebody important. Right from the beginning, I wanted him to be holding a big staff. This is an element that would underline very strongly the idea of a priesthood but also at a certain level of dignity and gravity that would suit the character very well, in my opinion. Once again, at this point, my main focus is to find a pose that works well with my idea. I first thought he could be holding some sort of data slate or book with his left hand, as uh, some sort of repository of knowledge or where he keeps the message he is about to broadcast. But even though I liked this idea, I felt it became a little underwhelming for his role as a herald. I felt that this position demanded a pose a little more theatrical and dramatic. In the back of my mind, I had this image of orators from the ancient Roman Republic giving uh, speeches to the Senate or to the crowd at the Forum. So with that in mind, this was the inspiration I wanted to suggest. So, I finally decided to raise the left arm instead, immediately providing more drama to the pose. At the same time, I'm working on adding elements to the character's body that will help underlining this aspect of cybernetic enhancement. For that, I thought of a similar idea to Iron Man's energy core that shines through his chest, plus a myriad of cables that hangs from the priest's head and are attached to some tech devices along his body. While working on these elements, I came back to the idea about how he communicates if he has no mouth or throat to speak with. Then I had this idea that maybe there could be a cord or cable that descends from where his mouth would have been and gets attached to the staff that he uses as a mobile broadcasting device, uh, some sort of megaphone uh, or loudspeaker. I really like this idea since even though it would not be uh, very practical in real life, it managed to add this element of madness, dark and creepy mood so iconic of the Warhammer 40k universe. I also start exploring what he is carrying on his back, some sort of generator, backpack, etc. etc. From this point, I spent quite some time trying to define all these elements and come up with some designs that I will be happy with. 
I decided to add, attached to the backpack generator, one of these super iconic servo arms. Something very fitting, especially considering we are talking about a priest of the Mechanicum, right? When defining and adding more and more details to all these elements, one important aspect I had in mind is that even though it is supposed to be everything very high tech, in order to fit the mood and art direction of this universe, those tech elements need to have some sort of archaic or raw feel to them. That was part of the reason I spent quite some time during this phase of the process. But at this point, most of the main ideas I wanted to implement on the character are already there. So most of the work forward is about polishing and defining what I already have except some few elements I will be adding like the omnipresent servo skull or the hologram displayed from his left hand. And it is done. Now we have a character that achieves the original vision and intention I set myself from the very beginning. A tech priest from the Warhammer 40k universe with an eerie and creepy feel from the display of cybernetic augmentations on his body. That also managed to clearly transmit the fact he is some sort of herald or messenger. And of course, the result could be better or worse, that is for you to judge. But the fact that I actively defined a set of creative goals and directions from the start, from a narrative and design point of view, has allowed me to use all my creative energy with intent and efficiency. Working this way not only makes the creative process easier, but also provides you with a proper mindset to create something unique and fresh. So remember, the very first rule, key to paint like a pro, to create like a professional artist, is to focus your creative energy and use your technical skills with a specific direction or creative goals in mind from the very beginning. 
I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and you find it useful. Let me know in the comments. And like always, if you have any feedback or suggestion for new content, please write it down as well in the comment section. Don't forget to join the live streams on Saturday at 9 p.m. Central European time as well. And please leave a like and subscribe if you have not done it yet. It really helps independent artists like myself to continue doing this. And until next time, have a good one and bye bye.